Okay, originally what I did when I made my first batch of uh, water in the 500 litre tanks and so forth and put it on top of the house I was living in at uh, Mill Street, um, I got my finger like that and I pricked it five times. Then I started to bleed. Then I put it in the water. And I did this all the time. So the person who would drink that would either cure them on the spot, but they had to listen to the commandment. Do not get up and walk around. Do it very gently. If you do, it'll cure you. So here's the uh, cult leader, Indonesian king he made out himself to be, that had um, started a sex cult. And uh, he was a Buddhist, and uh, he had uh, quite a big following in Australia, and all around the world, for that And uh, my oldest uh, stepdaughter, Dimity, she had got a new name, and uh, she would sit and look after this man and they'd all taken in turns, uh, her night was Friday night. So she'd come to me and she said, that water, miracle water, will it cure him? And I said, it'll either cure him or kill him. <laughs> so I gave her um, four litres of it with my blood in it like that. He drank it and I said, now there's one thing you've got to remember, not to get up because you're going to feel so good. You'll be cured, but your heart might be able to take it. Oh, been lying there for a bloody year. So uh, he felt so good, got up, went to the toilet, come back and dropped dead. A friend of mine, through Michelle, she'd gone to school with uh, this lady from the five-year-old. <clears throat> so that was all his friend. So her husband, quite a comical fellow, uh, he had uh, lung cancer. I'd gone up and met him. We immediately got on well, telling jokes and carrying on. And he was telling me about all the rigorols he had to go through to get his lungs drained and the pain and suffering. And I said, I can cure you. Oh, yeah, can I? Yeah. So, I bring up shortly after that a bottle of water. I said to him, now you drink it. I said, but if you get up immediately and walk around, you'll drop dead. I said, don't do that. Right. So, we leave and then... Uh, Next day, get a phone call, he's dead. What happened was, he felt so good, he got up, got the lawnmower out, started cutting the grass and fell over in a little fresh grass, grass that he cut. Stunned dead. Heart attack. So, he was going to die a painful death anyhow, but the point is, if he'd listened and just took it easy, he was cured, and yet he did the Adam trick. Don't eat the tree over there. As soon as that first disobeyment of a man he was talking to was God in the bloody, is his voice talking to him, he had paradise, it's too stupid. He had that evil bit in him, free will. So he ate up the tree, but he got his wife to do it first and blamed her forever more. That's what man's all about. So this stuff here, um, you can Leave it in for half an hour if you like, or 10 minutes, 5 minutes. You write love on the side of it. We did it with our pen here. You might be able to see it with a laser. But I wanted to compare what happens. I'll shine here, and you'll see that there's no light shining inside here, but in there, there's a strong beam of light. When I put it there, you can see how powerful it is. Now that has ripped much faster in the soda water. Hmm. We've got a lot to do with the carbon dioxide. Well, we, when we were going to, to uh, take the cure of the H1N1 to Central Australia, the Aboriginals are trying to target the kill because they're the sovereign owners of Australia. Um, and they've got them in little concentration camps, not allowed to go in without the ship permission. So we just drive straight in. And um, they are targeting these people with all sorts of diseases, which I know how to cure. Now there, look at my blood now. Those little bottles, one swig, <clears throat> H1N1, gone. What? 
mm-hmm. everything else is wrong. Mm-hmm. As I'm talking to the Aboriginals and uh, uh, we was in that lady's house and she's clicking on the phone straight on the internet to see if I'm saying what I'm saying I am. Mm. If you put the name in, it comes up, I am the Christ. Mm. So I've used man's weapons against himself. And uh, this time round, it's uh, the fulfillment of the take up your cross and follow me prophecy. Now, what that means is you're going to be born again, get down there, yeah, right? And you're going to do that, you're going to do that, you're all, and you're going to drive this poor man mad. You're going to be a town slut. You'll, you'll do everything evil possible to hurt him. First of the crucifixion. But by free will, I married, even as, as a baby boy, my parents would go for a drive. The old Morris Cowley, right? Mm-hmm. Where they go? Up the bloody blue mountains. Mm-hmm. Right? The first trip up there, I threw up. Mm-hmm. I thought it was car sickness. No, I knew what was coming. Mm-hmm. So when I finally met her, I, I went back years later to see Nicole, and she didn't want nothing to do with me. Or to China. And uh, it was a three and six eight feet above sea level where I met her. But that gets us to the problem of uh, solving the world's problems because you'd have to say what you would look upon her and her um, arm. Uh, what would Jesus do? I said, I wouldn't get a tattoo. She said, You're, He's right here, ask him. I said, I wouldn't get a tattoo, remember? Mm-hmm. She wouldn't get the tattoo, anyway. Of course. Old black eye, she called me. <laughs> The devil himself. So anyhow, we, we've been going and curing everybody of these things around the world. Of course, prophecy is that I'll be rejected because the churches and the lifestyle of the modern human race is all based on the teachings of Cain, which is Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm. So it's got to be taken out. Now, we're speaking now a little under seven days to my 69th birthday, which could be a very dramatic moment. Uh, we might be ascending and bring back 10,000 with us in the clouds. So keep looking up. Now what happened is, uh, this has got a, a 6 volt setting and a 12 volt setting. This is a needle I jab my finger with. There, the blood's in there. Right? Now if I take this over, this is the wire coming from the little transformer. It comes here, it's quite long. If I bring it over to that wire, It's reacting to the, the flow of electricity going through. There it's stuck to it. Alright? See how it's stuck? And she swings away. Now, down in here, there's magnets. Very, very mild magnets. But it's sticking to the glass all the way up. So the wire itself is putting a current across. But because you're winding it around, you're making a bar magnet out of it, or an electromagnet. So we've got two little 22 mil by two or three mil magnets. Just fair right magnets, buy them anywhere, get them for nothing. And you can see how it's sticking to the wall. You see the angle I'm pulling away from, and that she drops away. So, again, one of the things that we do, that will cure anything. Got my blood, if you're evil, got the Ark of the Covenant. But John Wyatt said, he has called from America to take four bodies out of Jews that went in. Jews that say they're Jews, no, I'm not. Ron Wyatt, eh? Ron Wyatt. Mm. Who does it? John. John Wyatt. That's his brother, is it? <laughs> All right, so there it is. So we set the voltage down to six volts. Mm-hmm. 
the other same phenomenon. We turn it off, will we have the same phenomenon? Very slow. So the water has held its charm. So there you go, drink up, have a cupful, and if you live, you'll want this. <laughs> <laughs>